I'd like to welcome you to our May 13th, 2021 council meeting. In the interest of time efficiency and ensuring that everyone who wishes to address the council is given the opportunity to do so, the following will apply to all comments made by the public. If you desire to be recognized by the chair, please fill out a request form and present it to the city clerk present here in council chambers. Each speaker shall be allotted three minutes to address the council unless such time is extended by the mayor or by questions from council. Groups shall designate a spokesperson to avoid repetition of comments. Every effort will be made to avoid interrupting speakers, and we thank you for participating in your city government. We ask that you please silence all electronic devices um, at this time. <clears throat> with that, I call this uh, council meeting to order. We'd like to begin with our invocation. Could we all please stand? I'd like to ask Pastor Leonard Thompson from Heart Cry Chapel to please come and share our invocation. And if you will, please remain standing for our pledge. Would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to serve community through the function of governmental authority and, and public participation. God, we pray for our country, we pray for our world, and Lord, we pray for your presence in these places. We pray for this city, <clears throat> this city council, its staff, mm -hmm. our law enforcement personnel and first responders, and all who work to create and maintain order peace and prosperity for all citizens. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit's wisdom would guide and direct these proceedings. And we thank you for your freedoms, your protections, and your provisions that we have because of you. I pray these men and women who lead this city will be protected along with their families and that your blessings will abound in their lives. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Blackwell? Here. Deputy Mayor Trace? Here. Councilmember Matheny? Here. Councilmember Cooper? Here. Councilmember Askew. As we begin tonight, we would like to have a presentation of the ACFR financial report for the city of St. Cloud. And we will invite Purvis and Gray to come up and share with us. Oh, you gonna start, Wendy? Yes, sir, you go ahead. Me. Wendy Colazzo, finance director, just a, br a brief introduction for them. Um, Thank you. Uh, the presentation that is to follow is a 2019-2020 um, audit findings um, for the annual comprehensive financial review. And Mr. Tim Westgate and Matt Gano from Purvis Gray and Company will be presenting that to you all now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, All right, good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to present to you, as Wendy said, the results for the audit of the September 30th, 2000, uh, 2020, 2020 uh, audit. We already reviewed the details with management and optionally to some of the council members today. Uh, we're presenting to you to focus on some highlights, primarily uh, just highlights of the audit results and an opportunity if you have any questions that came up from your review. Again, I'm Tim Westgate. I'm the audit partner with the engagement. Uh, Matt Gano is the audit manager and also on the picture is uh, Mike Sandstrom, he is uh, audit manager, senior audit manager as well, and he was involved on the IT side of the audit. Uh, so we make up the core of the management of your audit team. First thing that I wanna talk about uh, and highlight to you is the uh, financial report of the city is submitted to the GFOA to participate in the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting Program. And with that program, the city submits their financial report and it is for states and local governments to exhibit going beyond the minimum requirements and meet additional criteria of transparency, additional disclosure requirements, additional information in that package in a spirit of full disclosure. And the GFOA is the government 
Finance Officers Association, a nationwide program, and they recognize the city's uh, local governments and states that participate in that program. Uh, the city of St. Cloud has met that for over 20 years in a row. In the front of your report, you'll have a certificate that talks about the 2019, received it again, and I really believe that for the 2020 report, uh, the city will again receive that recognition. Uh, so we like to always recognize that each year for the effort uh, that the city takes. The next slide here is talking about the auditor's reports. And this is where we communicate the key uh, uh, highlights of the audit and the conclusions there. And to save you from reading uh, each you know, page of this package tonight, uh, the first report that's in there is the auditor's report. And that would be on page one of the package. And that talks about uh, what period we're auditing. What are we looking at? Talks about what is a financial audit. It has reminders that the city is responsible for the financial statements. The city is responsible for internal control. And our role as your auditors is based on the sampling and testing and inquiries and the procedures that we perform is to provide an opinion on those financial statements. And we're pleased to uh, report that we were able to issue an unmodified opinion. Uh, that is a clean opinion, the highest level of assurance that you could receive. And with that opinion that is submitted um, and meets the requirements of the Florida Auditor General, your requirements under Florida statutes, um, as well as your secondary bond market, uh, your submission to granting agencies, as well as your direct placement loans, for example, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection loans or direct bank loans that you have. So this uh, reporting package meets those requirements. The second item on there talks about internal control. So as I mentioned, the city is responsible for internal control, but as part of our audit and being conducted under government auditing standards, we look at internal control for the purpose of our audit. And if we come across items that are material weaknesses in your internal control system or items that are significant deficiencies, we would report those to you in this package. Uh, we're pleased that you can flip all the pages, but the city did not have any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies reported in the program or in the results of the audit. Uh, there is one non-compliance item out in there uh, that you're very familiar with, and that's related to the DSD bonds and related to the uh, delinquency on some of the debt and how that's reported. So until that land sales sells and can get that off the book, we'll just have to keep talking about it a little bit each year. Uh, you're very familiar with it, uh, the process there, and there's some reported items in there um, that we can touch on if you have more questions, but I know you're very familiar. Continuing with the audit reports, in the very back, we're required to issue an examination report under the Florida statute requirements for uh, compliance with the Florida statutes 218.415. And that relates to the city's investments and the investment uh, statutes, the city's investment policy. We're pleased to report that we believe the city complied uh, with that statute, at, with the uh, surplus investments of the city. There was no non-compliance reported there. At the end of the reporting package, rules of the Auditor General also has a lot of requirements that need to be met as part of our audit process. Um, it talks, uh, again, um, it focuses on items uh, that don't meet that material weakness threshold or significant deficiency, but things that may fall in a lower threshold, or if you had cases of deteriorating financial condition, those would be addressed in that letter. Uh, we do have some recommendations in that letter. We are pleased to report that the items that we talked about last year, aside from the DSD, um, have all been addressed. So there aren't repeat items other than the DSD related item. So we appreciate that. We do have some recommendations that came out of the audit from the current year that Matt will address in a few moments. Significant estimates and judgments is an area that the accounting standards require us to communicate when we meet with the boards or city councils. And it's just to emphasize that there are estimates that are in your financial statements and to be aware of them. For example, estimates related to self-insurance liabilities, 
um, estimates related to pension liabilities and the funded status of pensions, items like that, that the economic factors or changes in assumptions, those estimates could change from year to year. Uh, we do look at those assumptions and the process that goes into them, and we believe that the estimates are, are reasonable and are supported by our opinion as well. So just items that we are supposed to talk about. So going on from there, I will let Matt uh, review some of the financial highlights, again, to save you from flipping through and reading every page. So. Thank you, Mr. Wasey. Uh, yeah, so this uh, first slide here actually shows a certificate of its financial highlights. I'm not going to go over each item listed here, but I just want to point out a few key areas to be aware of. First thing there, you can see the governmental funds. Uh, the change in fund balance is all positive, so all the governmental funds that are reported in your financial statements actually had increases in their fund balance in the current year. Uh, specifically, your general fund, which is your main operating account for your city, had an increase of $459,000 in the current year. Uh, with an ending fund balance of $3.5 million. Of that $3.5, uh, roughly $8.2 million was an unassigned fund balance, which meets the reporting requirements for the minimum uh, fund balance policy that's established by the city. Uh, further down there, you know, the property fund, uh, prop proprietary funds, the change in net position are all positive as well. So that's another uh, good thing to look at when you're looking at these financial highlights here. And you can see uh, next to that's your working capital. And all those balances are all positive as well, aside from the Stephens Plantation DSD, which uh, relates to some of the items that Tim previously mentioned. Uh, your working capital is just a, uh, one of the calculations of ratios that can be utilized to help show the stability and the strength of the uh, funds themselves. It basically shows what your uh, ability is to meet your current liabilities for each of those funds using your current assets. So a positive balance is always, always well appreciated for those. Uh, some of the significant events and stuff I just wanted to point out, first of all, COVID-19, I know everybody's probably a little bit tired of hearing about it, but we would be remiss if we didn't mention it uh, because this financial report does include the time period which COVID first came on the scenes. Um, we are um, looking at those financial highlights, so you can see the city actually fared quite well given the circumstances um, due to some of the practices that were put in place by the city, reducing costs mitigate, uh, and other mitigating factors helped kind of keep the strength of the city in place. Um, along with that, hopefully the American Rescue Plan Act, the additional funding from that should also help the city uh, mitigate any long-term effects. There is still an uncertainty uh, related to the long-term effects of COVID, so that's just why we'd like to mention that here. Uh, the next item down, the advanced refunding. There was a advanced refunding in the current year for your 2010 B BAB bonds. Um, that actually resulted in an economic gain for the city in the current year of $3.6 million. So that transaction occurred during this year that's being audited and presented. And the last item is a subsequent event. There is a subsequent event disclosure in your reporting package uh, related to the large purchase related to the Hastings Ranch that occurred subsequent to year end, but there is an additional subsequent disclosure related to that purchase. Uh, just a few other uh, audit matters to kind of refer to and mention. Uh, accounting policies, if there were any changes in accounting policies or any significant changes in your accounting practices, we would mention that to you. Uh, the current year, there was nothing really to be reported related to that. Also, if there were any disagreements with management or difficulties encountered during performing the audit, we would also bring that to your attention, but we are glad to announce that there is nothing to report there. Um, you can see on the page there were a few, two audit adjustments. Uh, that were made uh, um, as a result of our audit procedures that were corrected during the course of the audit. So those adjustments have been made and are properly reported in your financials. Um, so a few of the recommendations that Tim briefly mentioned related to the rules of the Auditor General Management Letter. Uh, the first item, the first two items actually, notice of event default in the Stevens Plantation. Uh, those are result, result are, are related to the items that Tim previously mentioned that have been ongoing for several years. So those are kind of repeat items from previous years. The third item mentioned there, your capital assets. Uh, this is a new comment, and this primarily relates to um, just a recommendation to improve your financial reporting and your timeliness of your year and closeout procedures related to fixed assets um, just resulted in some timing issues. And this was primarily resulted uh, related to uh, there was a turnover in the staff in the position that actually looked over the fixed assets in the finance department. Uh, anytime that kind of stuff happens, you're bound to have some delays. Uh, the position has been filled since then, so we believe this will be resolved in the next year. There is one other item that's not mentioned on this slide, but it is in your management letter comments, and it's related to the 
Um, Related to the Florida Building Code, so there was an enactment of a Florida Statute 55380 that was enacted in the current year that actually has a limit uh, for the carry forward balance that the city is allowed to bring forward related to their building fund. Um, as of 930 2020, <coughs> it appeared that the city was out of compliance and had a larger carry forward balance than the Florida Statute uh, allowed for. The remedies that are in the Florida statute that, are, that I mentioned are either to then remit, I'm sorry, reduce fees or refund the fees. Um, as our issuance of the report that occurred in the late March, neither of those items have occurred um, as of year end. So it did appear that the city at that time was out of compliance. So there is also a comment related to that that's also going to be found in the management letter comments in your report. Uh, just some of the future accounting de uh, developments. I'm not going to go through each of these items here. But the first one I do want to mention, just GASB 87 for leases, because this one's going to have probably the largest immediate impact on the city. And essentially, this is kind of establishing the way the leases are currently reported, either as operating leases or capital leases. Uh, all of those items are actually going to have to change, and they may be reported on your balance sheets going forward. So there is some research that needs to be done uh, by the city and the finance staff to kind of consider what contracts and agreements may be affected by this new standard for reporting purposes. Um, and there's a few other items. We don't think any of these other items are going to have any large impact on the city, but we at least want to list them so you can be aware of them. And there's some additional uh, future accounting developments that are a few years out from now, so we're not going to go into detail of those. But I don't think any of these are going to have any significant impact on the city. So nothing to be concerned about in those. Um, so that concludes our presentation. I would like to, before we uh, wrap up, though, take the time to, again, thanks the finance uh, department, specifically Wendy and her team, uh, and, and the rest of the city as well. We really, though, work closely with the finance department, and they really have been helpful and accommodating throughout the audit process. Um, so we'd like to, if you have any questions, we'd like to go ahead and answer any of those. Are there any questions from council? Councilmember Trace. Uh, 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 city Manager Sturgeon, um, I thought we had a fix for the, the building department thing. We were spending money on, you know, improvements to City Hall and-, and That's expansion. correct, but yeah. like I said, they were auditing the period before, but moving forward, we've got a plan to spend that money down. So okay. that would be reflected in, I imagine, in next year's audit. Okay. So just that one blip for the one year, because it, it kind of took effect quickly? Even with the capital expenditures, we may have to have that discussion later on, or mid-year next year, how we, what we're going to need to do is regarding either a refund or, or fee reduction, so. Are there any other questions or comments? Well, we certainly appreciate uh, the history that we've had with you guys. You do an amazing job. Thank you for your professionalism. And uh, I would just like to also commend Ms. Colazzo and her staff. We have, I believe, a top-notch group of financial experts that uh, are doing an incredible job. And we appreciate all the hard work that uh, Wendy and her team has done. Thank you. At this time, before we go any further, I'd like for us to move over to council action item number one. If there are no objections, I'd like for us to consider that item at this time. Madam Clerk, will you please read that item number one into the record of council action. Request City Council's acceptance of the City's annual comprehensive financial report for fiscal year 2019-2020 as presented by Purvis Gray and Company, LLC Independent Auditors. First of all, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this item before we entertain a motion for approval of the audit? If not, could I have discussion and or motion by council regarding the acceptance of the uh, financial report? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from <coughs> Council Member Matheny. We have a second from Council Member Cooper. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings us to our Citizens Forum. Any person who desires to comment on an item not on this agenda, is provided this opportunity to address the City Council. 
Each person is requested to complete a signing form to be provided to the presiding officer prior to or as is, as soon as is practical thereafter the person addresses the council. We ask that as you come forward, you please state your name and address for the record, and we ask that you please limit your comments to three minutes. Betty Damke, have you requested, I believe, to speak during the consent agenda? This is the consent agenda. You have no, a... Mayor, you're on the you're on um, public, public comment. Public, public comment I'm right. sorry. We're on the Citizens Forum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Citizens Forum. Let's, uh, then we have Deborah Meredith, I believe. Deborah Meredith, 5595 East Earlham Bronson Memorial Highway. Um, I came before you with the food truck back in February, and um, it passed the business zoning, and I had talked about where I was located at St. Cloud Trailer Park. And when I went to fill out the pre-existing uh, for the conditional, I was told that I was in a MH2 zone, so I cannot park my truck at St. Cloud Trailer Park. I'm asking you to allow me to park there in this business zoning today. Um, I kind of gave you my background, what I was doing there, feeding the uh, people of the park. And I mean, when you guys had all the one acre, I met every criteria. So I didn't think nothing of being not in the business zone because you guys had already talked about me. But then when they called me and said, no, you are not. And I'm like, what? So I'm here today to ask you, can I please be in the business zone with the MH2? Well, as you know, when this was put in place to address a method by which these, these mobile food dispensing vehicles would be permitted within the city, which they currently were, have been prohibited, you created the, you amended the ordinance at the recommendation of the city staff to allow for these up these vehicles to be in the highway business zone with a conditional use permit. So this property is not located in the highway business use zone, so it is not eligible for a conditional use permit uh, to address it. Um, however, I, I, as from a side, I thought, and I just asked Mr. Sturgeon, we had had some specific discussions with, with regard to this. and in lieu of the city council directing staff to amend the ordinance again to allow for the, to expand where these vehicles could be by a conditional use permit, I think there's a different alternative to this particular situation uh, that I think we can work with within this, within this existing city code. Uh, and, I, and I believe we had briefly talked about it with staff, but we, we didn't, it never got addressed any full. I would request that possible I can get with, with city staff and the planning department. We understand the situations with regard to what she did. She did a very good job explaining what she does. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I think uh, uh, there's a quicker resolution to this than that. And if you give us a little bit of time, we can probably work on it. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, I, I like the plan. And, and I had thought, I mean, I guess I just said it, but maybe it didn't get anybody else to <laughs> agree with me on it. But um, I had thought we had talked kind of situations like if a private, like if a neighborhood wanted to have a food truck come in yeah. and then it was inside the neighborhood and it was on, you know, property inside the neighborhood, like I don't have an issue with that. Like in her case, I know you're in the mobile home. Park. It's like if she's inside the mobile home park, the mobile home park doesn't have any issue with it. It's not I'm, visible well, to well, the street. If I may, Councilman, that's exactly what I'm referring to. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just that I thought that's what we had talked about. So great. Okay. Yeah. I'm on the highway. And I'm not inside the RV park. I'm located right on the highway. Oh. Thought, uh, and which is the RV park. It's the office area of the parking lot. And the so RV park is behind us. It's yes. not a mobile home park. It's an RV park. Well, okay. There, frankly, there may be an issue if, at, yeah. as to the location, but if you have a mobile vehicle, based on what, if I may, based on what you suggested your, your purpose was, I understood that you were really providing a service to the folks that lived in the, that were in the RV park. There may be a way to allow this. It may, though, however, have require the vehicle itself be located in a different location within yeah. the park. 
Councilmember Trace. I, I was going to ask about the same thing of it being in a neighborhood having to do a special. Right. A special events permit. Yeah. Or something like that we so. Right. But if it's on 192, it's kind right. of like all the other ones. Right. Where it has to be on a highway business owned property. So if you guys can look into it and. Yeah, I get it. And, and, back and what I was suggesting is exactly what Councilwoman Matheny was referring to and what we talked about earlier. That was not actually specifically incorporated into this code because I don't think that was the intent of the council when you did this to address right. these. But I think we can work on this and we can do it. But frankly, it may require, based on what was just said, it may require a different location, a specific location within the park. And is that something we can have staff yeah. work with you about? Yeah, well, I guess, we'll Mr. Sturgeon, if you and Mr. Manzaris will get together and, and help follow up with this situation. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during the Citizens <coughs> Forum? If not, that does bring us to the consent agenda. The next portion of tonight's meeting is the consent agenda, which contains items that have been determined to be routine and non-controversial. If anyone in the audience wishes to address a particular item on the consent agenda, now will be the opportunity for you to do so. Additionally, if staff or members of the City Council wish to speak on a consent item, they will have the same opportunity. Mr. Sturgeon, I believe you want to pull a couple of items. Yes, sir. I'd like to pull item D, Delta, for additional information and pull item Q for a future agenda. So if you're pulling D, are you wanting to discuss that here? Or you yes, sir. I have additional okay. information. All right. And then on item L, were you guys making any changes to that? Request. There were a couple of emails that came around today about um, that. I don't know if you guys are making any changes to that. Not at this time. We had some staff evaluate I part see of the Andre. Yeah, Andre said Andre's trying to get your attention. Okay. Why, why don't we, if we could, Mayor? Why don't we'll, we pull we'll that about. item? We can yeah. talk about. Okay, that. we'll pull that item. Oh. I'm our Councilmember Matheny. Yeah, I wanted to pull L for a separate vote. Okay. Councilmember Cooper. R. R. Okay. All right. Let's go back to item D first. Mr. Sturgeon? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Item D, Resolution 2021-75R, is the purchase of a clam truck and for solid waste. The contract price has changed because of the increase in steel prices. They're going to administer a $2,500 steel surcharge. Uh, the funds are available to cover that additional charge, but since it's a different number than is before you, I needed to bring it to your attention. Um, we probably will see this on some other items too moving forward because of some of the commodity price increases, but I'll make sure those are fully disclosed. Is there any, was there a specific number you need to do or? It's going to be uh, plus 2,500? 2, plus 2,500, okay. yes, sir. Thanks for asking. So that number will be a, an increase of 2,500. That's correct. Okay. Let's go to the next item L. Councilor Martini, I'll uh, you speak I just to want first. a separate vote on it. Separate vote. And I assume you want a separate vote on R, Mr. Cooper? Yes, sir. Ms. Damke, you had on your no, Mr. Mayor. thing, I'm sorry, I got it. It says consent agenda. J. Okay. Yes, J. I couldn't tell for what that was exactly. Okay, it's a J. Would you like to come and speak to that? Betty Dampke, 4776 Hidden Heights Trail, St. Cloud. Uh, very quickly, you bought the Hastings Ranch, which 
we were all in support of and appreciate it. But I am here representing uh, our Highway 15 corridor group, which you know what it entails, a big, big area. A lot of uh, the residents in this area have expounded on their viewpoint of the proposed name of the ranch at St. Cloud, I believe it is. And there, we understand Hastings name cannot be attached because that Hastings Ranch, because that's their logo, name, et cetera, et cetera. But um, we're asking for something other than the ranch at St. Cloud. And to be very brief, and y'all can discuss it, just a few names that have been presented have been the park at Narcusi, Narcusi Ranch, and Preservation Park. This is in the Narcusi area. It's not in St. Cloud. People, let, let's recognize it for what it is and where it is. And that area, the historical value of all of this, we're just asking you to reconsider the name rather than the ranch at St. Cloud. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Sturgeon. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, Ms. Demke, thank you for your support when we purchased the ranch. And we hear you loud and clear. The Hastings did express that they didn't want, wish us to use that name anymore. This is a placeholder. We do have a policy in place for naming a park, and we will move forward with that to get community input. Okay. Thank you. Good. Andre, are you here to speak to any item on the consent agenda? Why don't you do that now? Yes, L. I just want to get closer to the front. <laughs> just Andre, want to be close to the council. I'm Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. Um, item L was pulled by, by the city manager, and the reason is um, during our briefings, we had several concerns that were raised regarding this product that we are purchasing. Um, if you recall, this was an item that was budgeted um, previously, and um, we are moving forward in an attempt to um, get this model um, um, purchased and, and, and subscribed. And the base model includes several work tasks, one through six, um, and then there were some additional optional submodels. And the question was raised well, if we did not get the submodels, would the analysis be complete? And it would be complete as done except for those additional submodels if in fact you want to look at those other areas but as it is for $110,000 it will still provide the needed analysis for a build out scenario for the city because the build out scenario is based on the future land use designation and the capacity however um, in consultation with the um, product developer um, other communities have, in fact, considered the other submodels. And there's actually an additional submodel for the police that was also done um, that, again, is not concluded here. So if the council wishes to move forward, we can, but the, these additional submodels were not budgeted, and that's why it was not included in the original proposal. Thank you. Councilmember Matheny. Thank you. So. Um the concerns that I had with this item, and I brought it up in my agenda review, was that it's really just focusing on traffic. And so, you know, we still have this looming question about where the city limits are, where the water limits are, how far, you know. So to me, I feel like it's a partial exercise that we need to be looking at every single thing. Like when we have this conversation, we need to look at traffic, we need to look at land use, we need to look at the utilities, we need to look at the fire stations we need to look at the police service area we need we, we you know we need to look at everything together so when i read the scope for this agenda it's really focusing on traffic so I, you know to me i'm just like I, I don't know how we do kind of a a half measure that's what this feels like to me um so that's why i wanted to pull it and vote separately I mean, if i may I, yes. I i apologize if the information was relayed um partially to you um, because it's not just only traffic and I may have conveyed that incorrectly to you. It actually includes a housing analysis as well and future land use. What it does not specifically include is just what you mentioned, water, 
hydraulic analysis. But um, those are the other models that can be included in there. Mr. Sturgeon. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I also um, we talked to Mr. Trace during his uh, agenda review, and I did have the utilities director look at the modeling as far as utilities, and we already do that modeling, and we think we can overlay that with this, this modeling software. Uh, but certainly open to looking at uh, the council member Matheny that we didn't do the, the holistic approach. But as far as utilities, we have already done that modeling and can overlay that with this pro with this uh, software. Council member Trace. Yeah, because to me it was using the, the transportation. I didn't really get a TAZ map. I don't know how many zones there are in St. Cloud or in, I guess, the JPA area to know does that get enough granular detail. Uh, I did get a chance to just flip through the reports that were sent out today that were the same report for Collier County and I think another city. City of Auburn. Yeah, um, just to see what it is. But I mean, if it's if this is contentious, I think I mean, do we just need to continue this to then make sure that we are getting the right the right tool? Because um, with uh, uh, Ms. Matheny's comment about like the financial model needs to tie into it as well. Like when we're talking about annexation mm -hmm. and how far we we go out, there's the the financial aspect of that as well as. Does it provide enough tax base to pay for the services that are there have, have to be rendered by the city? So that would be a add-on separate analysis done by a separate consultant. This model is not designed specifically for doing a financial analysis. This is a build-out growth scenario model versus a financial model. But I do understand what you just said. Um, the additional modules that would be or could be considered would include the police, park, fire, and, ut and utility submodel, and stormwater. So that's one, two, three, four, five additional modules. Ten, ten and to me, it's not the the fact there there are or are not model uh, modules. The, the fact is, does this get us the the full picture of what we need to do to make those decisions? And if it if it doesn't, do we need to bring on that other consultant to to paint that full picture? And we and. Uh, I can check with Wendy, but we do have financial economic anal um, consultants available, so we can expand the scope of this exercise to include that because we already had a presentation by Steve McDonald regarding annexation and some fiscal impacts. So the fact that we're moving forward with this inter interactive growth model gives us the ability to bring him on board to explain the ultimate scope of what we are trying to achieve. And just by clarification, the TAZs typically are about 3,000 people, so that's how detailed it gets. Okay. So it's pretty um, granular. Okay. Yeah, because I, I wasn't the biggest fan of that workshop we had of just the analysis and the output of, of that, that prior one. I don't mm -hmm. think it, it helped with the decision-making process. Okay. So as long as we can get something that will help with that decision-making process. Mr. Sturgeon. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Trace. Uh, we went back and reviewed that workshop, the Deputy City Manager and I, and we went back and developed the task authorization and scope for Mr. McDonald to dive deeper into this. Um, as far as this item, I'd like to pull this uh, item for a further agenda and have staff review each of those modules and come back and make a recommendation to me, and then I can make a recommendation to Council. So we hear you loud and clear. Yeah, because it, if it doesn't get us what, what we need to make those decisions, yes, I'd rather spend more money to make make it right. Is that? Yes, sir. Along with uh, Ms. Matheny, is that along the lines of where you're at too? Yeah, that's all the same stuff I told the city manager. Like that workshop we had to me was pretty much a waste of time. And, yep. um, you know, we, and we never have circled back to have real life scenarios created. And that's why this, I was just like, I, I just don't really know that it's going to get us a usable piece of information that globally looks at the city. So. Yeah, and I just want a little more time to review those those reports that came out as well. Just to, okay. So I'm pulling yeah. item L for future agenda. Every Thank you. So you're pulling pulling L altogether. That settles that issue. And item R. Just pull it for a uh, just for a separate vote. For a vote. Why don't we address that issue now? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to item R before we vote? If not, could I entertain discussion and or motion regarding item R? Motion to approve item R of the consent agenda. We have a motion from Councilmember Trace. I'll make it a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. 
Councilmember Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Cooper? No. Deputy Mayor Trace? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries three to one. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to any other item on the consent agenda? If not, could I entertain discussion and or motion for the adoption of the consent agenda minus the item that has been pulled L and uh, R that has been approved? Thank you. Or Q rather. <clears throat> Q and L have been pulled. All right, so motion approved consent agenda items A through K M through P and item D increasing the number uh, the uh, financial amount by twenty five hundred dollars. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Trey, second by Matheny. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Mayor Blake. Carries four zero. Brings us to public hearings. I'd like to ask the clerk if you'll please read items one and two. And Mr. Mayor, before she reads, if I may. Yes. So just as you as you'll know, Mr. Ashke is not present tonight, so you have four council members on it. For anybody in the audience is aware, and if any of your items are presented and the council votes on a two-two vote, that is akin to a denial. And therefore, so if you do not want to hear your item now, would rather hear the item when there's a full city council present, you have that right to ask the city council for that uh, when your item is called. Thank you. Thank you. Item 22, please. Final public hearing for ordinance number 2021-06, an ordinance of the city council of the city of St. Cloud, Florida, signing a future land use designation of public to approximately 16 new road and bridge facility. Located in the northwest corner of the intersection of Old Canoe Creek Road and Nolte Road, east of the Florida Turnpike and south of Neptune Road, providing for amending the official future land use map of the comprehensive plan, filing the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publication, applicability and effect, severability copies on file and effective date. Final public hearing for ordinance number 2021-07, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, signing a zoning district of professional compatible with a public Institutional future land use designation change adopted by ordinance number 2021-06 for approximately 16.36 acres identified as Osceola County Road and Bridge Facility. Located in the northwest corner of the intersection of Old Canoe Creek Road and Nolte Road, east of the Florida Turnpike, south of Neptune Road, providing for entering the designation of the official zoning map following the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publication, severability, and effective date. Good evening, Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. This is the final public hearing for Ordinance 2021-06 for a future land use change to public for approximately 16 acre tract referred to as Osceola County Road and Bridge Facility. The existing land use is medium desert residential and it's being changed to public institutional to represent a public use. It's compatible with the surrounding areas and existing use that's been there for a while and there are no adverse impacts to city facilities. It's consistent with our strategic plan goal for growth management. And dear and senior staff at their meeting on December 10th, 2020 approved, recommended approval of ordinance 2020-C06. The planning commission at their meeting on February 16th, 2021 also recommended approval that was transmitted to Florida Department of Economic Opportunity for interagency review and there was no objections from the state and the city council recommended action for this item is for approval of ordinance 2020-06. The next item is the companion zoning map amendment to rezone the property from plan unit development to P professional, which is the compatible and consistent zoning district for a public institutional use. Again, it's compatible with the surrounding area and there are no adverse impacts to city facilities. The, it's consistent with our growth management goal for, from a strategic plan. And the insurance staff at their meeting on the January 22nd recommended approval of ordinance 2021-07. Also the planning commission recommended approval. 
um, just by way of some information. Uh, you recall at the last meeting there were some concerns about the ability to continue the use that's there and also for their future use. This is a public use and therefore are entitled to any and all public use associated with Osceola County. Um, Melissa Dunklin, our planning and zoning division manager and myself visited with Dave Tomek and Wally, and we took a tour of the facility to ensure that we understood what was operating on that site, and we were satisfied with the use that's there. It is a public institutional use. There was a bit of confusion as to chickens on the site, um, and there was actually no raising of chickens. It's merely chickens that are used as part of a lab operation for the mosquito control. So any future use that's on the site um, would be consistent with this use that you would be considering tonight. So if I could um, ask your indulgence to approve Ordinance 2021-06 and also Ordinance 2021-07. The applicant is here if you have any questions. Would the applicant like to speak to this item? Items. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, Great speech by Andre. Uh, we did meet on site. Could we, you state your name, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, Wally Krujek, 6174 Oak Shore Drive, St. Cloud, Florida. Thank you. We did meet on site with Andre and his staff and our, our staff, Dave Tomek. We walked the entire facility, looked at everything that was out there. So uh, we're in agreement. We're good. Uh, just hoping for a positive outcome tonight. Thank you very much. Thank Would you. anyone in the audience like to speak to either of these items? If not, we'll have discussion and motion by council. Councilmember Matheny. Thank you. Um, I did, in my agenda review, ask the question, was everybody happy? I heard the county's happy, the city's happy, everybody's happy. So I would make a motion to approve Ordinance 2021-06. Second. second. We have a second from Councilmember Cooper, motion from Councilmember Matheny for the adoption of item 2021-06. Madam Clerk, you please call the roll. Deputy Mayor Trace? Aye. Councilmember Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Could I have a discussion and or motion regarding item 2021-07? Motion to approve 2021-07. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Matheny, a second from Councilmember Cooper. Madam Clerk? Deputy Mayor Trace? Aye. Councilmember Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Items carry. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, you please read item number three. First reading introduction for ordinance number 2021-04, <clears throat> an ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, amending an ordinance which assigned in zoning district of plan unit development to Anthem Park, located east of the Florida Pern Turnpike, west of Old Canoe Creek Road, and described further herein, providing for the approval of the revisions of the final master plan, providing for the filing, uh, filing of the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publica publication, severability, conflicts, and effective date. Good evening, City Council. Uh, I just was informed by the applicant that they would like to continue this item based on the determination that the city attorney offered by not having a full council present tonight. Thank you. So that would be continued. Well, we need a, just need a motion to continue it to the next meeting. So what's the date? I believe the 27th is the next one. Could I entertain a motion for continuance? So moved. Do we have a motion from Councilmember Cooper? Do I have a second? Second. Second, Councilmember Trace. Madam Clerk? Councilmember Matheny? Aye. Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us to items 4, 5, and 6. Madam Clerk, will you read? First reading introduction for ordinance number 2021-13, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida to annex into the City of St. Cloud approximately 13.57 acres identified as Center Lake Ranch Park parcel located east of 12 <coughs> Oaks Road and south of Handsome Road in accordance with the voluntary annexation provisions of Chapter 171.044 Florida Statutes. 
First reading and introduction for ordinance number 2021-14. Ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cal, Florida, assigning a future land use designation of mixed use to approximately 13.57 acres identified as Center Lake Ranch Park Parcel, located east of 12 Oaks Road and south of Handsome Road, providing for a financial official future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Filing the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publication, applicability and effects, severabilities copies on file and effective date. First reading and introduction for ordinance number 2021-15. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cal, Florida, assigning a zoning district of mixed mixed use, compatible with mixed use future land use designation change, adopted by ordinance number 2021-14 for approximately 13.57 acres identified as Center Lake Ranch Park Parcel, located east of 12 Oaks Road and south of Hamsom Road, providing for entering the designation of the official zoning map, finding the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publication, severability, and effective date. Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. Um, the applicant has requested that these three items, Ordinance Number 2021-13, Ordinance 2021-14, and Ordinance 2021-15 be continued based on the City Attorney's um, information regarding um, the complete. Thank you. Could I entertain a motion for continuance of Item 4? Uh, number 2021-13. And it will be continued to the 27th. To the 27th, continuance to May 27th. And Mayor, to make it easy, I think we can do one motion for all three of these items since it's just a continuance. Then could I entertain a motion for moving all three of these items, 2021, 13, 14, and 15, to May 27 meeting? So moved. We have a motion from Councilman Rathini. I'll make it a second. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> Brings us to items 7 and 8. Could you read those into the record, please? First reading and introduction for ordinance number 2021 20. An ordinance of the City Council of City of St. Cloud, Florida, assigning a future land use designation of commercial to approximately 9.99 acres, identified as Thompson Grove Commercial, located east of Live Oak Lane, south of East Earl Bronson Memorial Highway, providing for amending of the official future land use map of the comprehensive plan, following the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publica publication, applicability, and effects, severability, copies on file, and effective date. First reading and introduction for ordinance number 2021-26. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, assigning a zoning district of highway business compatible with commercial future land use designation change, adopted by ordinance number 2021-25 for approximately 9.99 acres, identified as Thompson Grove Commercial, located east of Live Oak Lane, south of East Earl Bronson Memorial Highway, providing for entering the de designation of the official zoning map, following the Planning Commission's recommendations, proof of publication, severability, and effective date. Good evening, Andre Anderson, Community Development Director. This is the first reading for the Thompson Grove Comprehensive Plan Amendment. It is to amend the designation from mixed use to commercial. Um, this was originally part of the Thompson Grove mixed use project. However, um, the, due to the size of the lot, it's pretty, quite difficult to meet the mixed use standards. And so the applicant is requesting to, for it to go back to the original commercial use that it was when it was originally in the county. And so, um, as I said, it's extinct use mixed use. The future land use proposes for commercial, and it's um, consistent with what's in the area. It's consistent with our growth management strategic plan goal. And staff at our meeting on April 18 recommended approval, and the planning commission at their meeting also recommended approval in April and ask that the City Council do the same. The next item is a companion zoning map amendment. This zoning from mixed use to highway business, which is compatible with the zoning in the area. Um, it's also, again, consistent with our strategic growth management goal. And staff at our meeting in February recommended approval of Ordinance 2021-26, and the planning commission also recommended and we ask that the city council do the same. There is a third item, but that's not scheduled now because it's still under review, which is the actual concept plan amendment to remove it from the original concept plan. And, and that will come back at a later date. But this is the first reading. Is the applicant here? Would he like to speak to this item? Mm -hmm. 
Leonard Thompson, 6815 uh, Old Melbourne Highway, St. Cloud. The uh, council has any questions for me, happy to try to answer. Okay. I think, uh, Andre explained pretty much what the process is. Thank you. If you'll hold on a minute, does anyone in the audience like to speak to item seven or eight? If not, we'll have discussion and or motion by council. Do you have any questions or do we have a motion? So moved. Oh, I had a question. Ms. Councilmember Trace. Uh, when there's this property and the one next to it, I can't remember which one, that there was a big, there was a lot of discussion about no multifamily happening on one of them. Was it this one or was it the one to the east of it? On the concept plan, it had even had on there, you know, it's commercial but no multifamily. Uh, I'm Is not it? aware of that. Okay. All right. uh, I'll have to pull up my notes from before. It's the first reading, so I'll. I'll, okay. I'll I don't find. believe there, that ever was an issue on this parcel. Okay, it must have been the one to the east of it. Okay. Yeah, right. I believe it was. As a matter of fact, I think now you're talking east. I, that's probably <clears throat> the one. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Cooper, second from Matheny, for the adoption of item 2021-25. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Trey. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Could I entertain a... Any further discussion or motion for the adoption of 2021-26? So moved. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Cooper, second by Councilmember Matheny. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that brings us to item number nine. Public hearing for resolution number 2021-079R, a resolu resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, amending resolution number 2020-215R, which adopts the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget for the City of St. Cloud, finding the City Manager has certified their prior year fund current revenues available in the budget for additional projects and programs in various funds not included in the original 2020-2021 budget, requiring the budget to be increased to set to said additional funding in the various funds, making a sub supplemental appropriations within the funds. Ms. Colazzo. Good evening, Wendy Colazzo, Finance Director. Um, as per City Code Section 212, this is in reference to any amendments happening after adoption. As you are fully aware, if there's any revenue excess or any other additional needs for appropriation, it is warranted that it be presented in a budget amendment in order to um, supplement any appropriation for that year. This is BA number three, resolution number 2021-0979, Romeo R, or R, sorry. Um, the city manager has certified that funds are available to appropriate these funds, and the budget amendment meets the strategic goals of the financial sustainability section of those goals. Highlighting first for the budget amendment number three in your general fund, a one and $225,557 increase. This increase is related to revenues being increased in the category of federal grants, those for other funding due to the anticipated receiving of the American Rescue Act of 2021. This has been computed by taking the sales tax and park recreation revenue losses of fiscal year 20 compared to 21 pre-COVID-19. The increase of the expenditure will be in the amount listed for an increase into the city council continuum. The simple answer or method to this is we reviewed prior year sales tax and park revenue. This was the loss that we've projected for in city council contingency once the coffers receive the federal, the American Rescue Act month dollars of 2021. Increasing in that is the intra-government transfers. We are decreasing the fire department budget, professional services category, or L by 200,000 for the additional funding for Project Papa Sierra 2104, also known as PS 2104, for Fire Station 32, the new build. This additional funding is for the PE and those costs exceeding the original anticipated estimates. At any time, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. 
percent fund, we are doing an increase which netted out to 720,431. Those increases into the revenue are also coming and will be allocated into due to the federal in the federal grant, excuse me, GL in reference to the American Rescue. Likewise, like the general fund, the calculations of revenue loss were 720,431 in reference to fiscal year in 2019. We are placing this in the expenditure for the new fire engine to replace engine number 11-29, which right now is reported at 21 years old. Capital projects, $8,839,460 in increase. The increase of the revenues, those are related to the following capital projects as I will outline them for you. PW2000, as you're familiar, this is the down Phase two. This is CRA fund. We are recognizing in capital projects the funding that is coming from the CRA and physically being transferred over to the capital projects to portion of the downtown revitalization phase two. Also in that eight million is PS twenty one oh four. This is for fire station thirty two build. This is the design work. This is being funded by the general fund. As I've stated before, our capital fund is also known as the Little Princess Fund. It makes no money. It gets funded by all other funds. So this is what's happening. We're giving her money in order to complete those projects. On in the increase of revenues related to the expenditures of the following projects, we have ST2104, which is Deer Creek Road, ST2105, Deer Creek Signal, and BM21. City Hall, the atrium edition. As you are aware in previous, uh, the previous uh, council meeting, uh, mobility fees will be taking care of that project for the Canoe Creek Road, Deer Creek Road. This is the recognition into capital projects for such. And BM2100 is the recognition of the expenditures for the atrium that will be funded by the building fund. Capital projects continued. We're reallocating by charter requirement, I am to inform you of any reallocation of funding for any projects that had an initial intent, and we are changing that purpose. So PS 2001, PS 2101, and PS 2102, as well as, um, excuse me, um, the admin portable office for just 20, 2102 will be going to project number 20, 2105 for the fire training facility admin projects. Originally, the PS2105 was labeled as fire training props. We have repurposed that and are requesting action through this budget amendment for that. Park impact fees had a zero increase to the expenditures. However, we did increase expenditures by 140,000. As you're aware, for the purchase of the mobile home that was originally related and was going to be bought by uh, the police impact fees, it was determined um, Oh, sorry, I thought you had a question, sorry. This was approved in BA number two for the purchase of the uh, through police impact fees. However, the determination happened that we were gonna change the funding and this is such change that will use park impact fees and um, decrease contingency expenditures by 140,000. Likewise, on the other side, everything we do to the left, we do to the right. So this is the right. The police impact fee, zero increase because we are increasing contingency. We're returning the 140000 that will not be spent and was privily approved for the mobile um, home for the ranch at St. Cloud. Mobility impact fees, 2633294 in increase. Um, this is being used and pulled from prior year fund balance in that amount of two million six hundred and thirty three thousand two ninety four Increasing the expenditures as you're well aware for the debt service of 2010 a and 2020 2010 B bonds We refunded them in 2019. These were the capital improvement revenue bonds. They were originally paid by the 310 fund, which is your old road impact fee fund. After the audit for this year, it was determined that this fund will now be closed. Therefore, we have to transfer the debt over to the mobility fee, and so the payments will be made out of the mobility fee to realign that as it should. We're decreasing contingency expenditures in the amount of two thousand two million, excuse me, two hundred and fifty thousand, and we're increasing expenditures in these categories, professional services in the amount of two million sixty four thousand seventy two, and contractual services in the amount of one eighty five 
928 for those projects listed before, which were ST2104 and 2105 for both Canoe Creek Road and Deer Creek Signal. Are coming in from the federal grants, um, will be increased for the federal grants. This is due again to the American Rescue Act. Water bill credits. There's an approximate estimation of $75 that will be given in credits for residential for potable water customers. The increase in expenditures, again, on the right side causes a $2,269,000 for other charges for the above accounts to receive these credits. In the building fund, $2,587,500 505, we're increasing this from prior year fund balance, but we're also decreasing expenditures at $1,212,495. Um, for the intergovernmental transfers of the project, the City Hall Atrium, as you know it, as BM2100, in the amount of $3,800,000. Motor pole fund, we increased our, we received an increase of $200,000. We're increasing revenues by such amount to in increase outside repairs and reimbursements from other departments. The increase in expenditures is also there in order for being able to clear work orders for the for additional accounts for outside repair costs that came higher than expected. In the CRA, also known as the Community Development Agency, two million five hundred eighty nine thousand four sixty. This is the increase of revenue from prior year to restricted revenues in those amounts, as um, noted before. When the CRA closes the end of the year and they have excess funds, which these were the reserves, we have to allocate them or have four options to do. One option is to allocate them to a project that is aligned to the CRA. Therefore, the CRA is aligning those two point five million dollars to downtown revitalization phase two. PW2000. Staff is uh, recommending approval of resolution 2021-079-R and then request uh, approval of that such resolution from the council. Thank you. That's a lot. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak to this item? If not, we'll have discussion and or motion by council. Council so, Member Trace. No question. Um, on the uh, refund on the water bill or the, the credit on the water bill. Mm -hmm. Do we know how some of the apartment complexes are, are metered? Would that go back to the actual resident themselves or would that go to the owner of the apartment complex? It would go to whoever the meter is under or that account is under. That's the simplest way to do versus us going individually to each additional meter. So whatever the account, the live active account is listed to, that's who the credit would be awarded. It's not being awarded to the person, it's actually to the account. And do we know if that will trickle down to the actual residents? Like, does that, will that benefit go to those residents? I mean, if you have a meter at your house, it definitely goes to you if that bill is in your name. But on something like an apartment complex. I just don't know how they're metered, if it goes to the individual owner or not. It's a good point, Deputy. I, I think I, I'd have to get you a little bit deeper to make sure I can say that that will all right. It will go to the active account, but I can't guarantee right now that it will go to the individual resident itself because it's a credit on that such account one, but there's multiple attached to that. So I can make a note to really find that answer out if we're going to be able to do that or may have to manipulate that in order to disseminate that. Okay. That at this and, point. and I'm fine moving forward with it. I just want to make sure that that, that credit actually goes to the, in, the individual residents instead of just the owner of the complex getting that. Yes, sir. I'll credit. note that to get you the right response because I don't have that at this point. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Can I what, entertain a motion? I, I have one question. Councilmember Sorry. Matheny. What's the timing of that? The tranches? The credit? The credit. Um, it'll happen only from the American Act and we don't have a date. Um, we just signed and we're notified that we it's come a firm date. So once that is received in the accounts, we would then pass it again before anything happens. But I don't have a firm date as when the um, the dollars will be in our coffee. If you could predict it, you might want to buy a lot of tickets. Well, <laughs> I, I just, you know, if anybody listening to this, I don't want them to think like next yeah, month tomorrow. they're getting a $75 credit That's on their water bill. Yeah. Um, but I guess my secondary question is based on the point that uh, Deputy Mayor Trace made. Like in the community that I live in, there's one, I know this isn't, they were talking, this is the irrigation meter. Like there's one irrigation meter and I just pay my HOA, you know, my, my fees. So like if they got a single $75 
or is there, I just don't know when the apartment complex, potentially this number that we're approving could be changed, right? Like if we're, instead of we're saying there's 300 apartments and we were just assigning per meter and so there was this single $75 versus $375. So I guess, would this have to come back to us if that dollar amount changes? Yes, ma'am. It's not firm. This mm -hmm. is just the initial recommendations for what we could do for tranches, but it would come, come back, back to you all for that. It's not firm. It was just recommendations of what to do with the tranches. There's obviously a lot of other talks that I'm sure you guys will have about this and how to disseminate that, and that would be up to you all on how to do that. So this is just a recommendation of potential areas you could go with these tranches, but is not firm until you decide okay. what direction you'd like to give us. Okay. That's it. Any other discussion? Could I entertain a motion? Motion to approve uh, Resolution 2179R. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Trace. We have a second from Councilmember Matheny. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carried 4-0. Thank you. We have already acted on item number one in council action. Brings us to item number two, Madam Clerk. Resolution number 2021-091R, a resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, authorizing the City Manager to enter in a first amendment to the task authorization for continuing contract and agreement for professional engineering services with Osceola Engineering dated September 14, 2017, and any amendments thereto with the Court Avenue site master plan proposed at the existing facility located at 3371 Court Avenue in the City of St. Cloud, Florida, and providing for an effective date. Good evening, Mayor Jason Miller, Fire Chief. Um, what you have before you is Resolution 2021-091R. It is for task authorization for the site master plan of the Court Avenue Training Facility. Um, as you all know, and have visited <coughs> out there, um, that facility is starting to grow. It's also starting to show some age um, on some of the structures, and we're looking at master planning the whole site. Obviously, the intention behind this is not to put the cart before the horse and to plan it out well. Um, this kind of goes along with the companion item, which is the next item, um, which is our training facility that's going to be uh, planned for that location. We'd like to run these concurrently. That's why you have them both before you tonight. Anything else? Only if you all have questions. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, could I entertain discussion and or motion? Regarding resolution number 2021-091-R. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Trace, second from Councilmember Martini. Madam Clerk. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Martini. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. That brings us to the next item you alluded to. If you'll please read that into the record. Resolution number 2021-092-R. A resolution of the City Council of the City of St. Cloud, Florida, authorizing the City Manager to enter, in task, enter into a task authorization for continuing content agreement for professional architectural services which song, with Song & Associates dated June 8, 2017, and amendment thereto for new St. Cloud Fire Department training building and providing effective date. Good evening again. Jason Miller, the Fire Chief. I am here again requesting for 2021-092-R. We are requesting approval for the design of uh, the training and office building at the Court Avenue Fire Station. This was contingent upon the passing of 2021-079R, which just happened a few moments ago. Our recommendation is for approval. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this item? If not, we'll entertain discussion and or motion by council. I have a question. Councilmember Trace. Have we gone through the analysis to make sure four to 6,000 square feet will be good for you guys for the next 10 years? Yep. And you'll have a, bit, a room big enough to fit everyone in? That's our intention. Um, our current classroom, we're shoehorned in there with yeah. 20 or so people. Um, we're planning on actually building a classroom capable of going up to 120. Perfect. Um, the purpose behind that also is we'll be able to have another large format building inside the city in the event we have another pandemic. It gives us another large format building to have meeting spaces. We can also potentially hold our swearing in and promotional ceremonies at that location. Perfect. And is there already a generator out there for the existing police facility in the... There is a small generator for the old fire station. Um, and when I preface small, I really mean small. I think it's only like pull, a 5K. Pull, pull it's, no, it's on propane okay. um, with electronics transfer switch and everything. Um, it is a 
small generator. It's probably five to six k. Um, it's not very big. Okay, but will you guys add those kind of? Um, eventually, we'll add. It's not in the initial proposal for the actual facility due to funding, um, and with it not being a as critical as a fire station, it's kind of downstream um, as far as our master plans. If when the building comes up, if you'd like us to include that and could maybe find some funding, we'd be more than happy to include that in the building design. <laughs> well, let's see how the sticker shock is first, I guess. <laughs> Anything else? Any other discussion? I'd like to make a motion for the adoption of resolution number 2021-092R from the mayor. Could I have a second? <clears throat> second. Second from Councilmember Trace. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Trace. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, you please read item number four. Discussion and possible action regarding appointments to vacancies on the Recreation Advisory, Com Advisory Committee and Planning Commission. First of all, we will, uh, Miss um, Jaworski, Miss like our deputy, cl our clerk, if she'll please speak to this item. First, uh, we have the Recreation Advisory Committee. We have a vacancy on alternate number two. I just want to note that in the criteria, you'll notice no more than two voting members can be county residents. There are three county residents that have put their name in. And you'll notice on the applicants, there are also uh, persons on that list that are also on other committees. And that is an at-large appointment. Mr. Hartwick, was he not serving on this committee before? Was he requesting the appointment? I have him on the zoning board. Okay, but he wasn't on this one before. Do we have a recommendation for the revisory uh, recreation advisory committee? William Norman. Well, I'll second that. We have a recommendation a nomination of Dwayne Norman. Are there any other nominations? Well, I I support the I support Dwayne Norman, but I think he just withdrew from. We just put him on a board, and he withdrew, didn't he? He came off planning commission because so, I think there was a conflict with employment. Okay. He did ask that we had changed his application to put this on it. So he's As first okay. appointment. Okay. I didn't know if these were old after his old applications right. and yes. stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with Mr. Norman okay. on there. Madam Clerk, we please call the roll. And there are no other nominations. Deputy Mayor Chase. Aye. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper. Aye. Mayor Blackwell. Aye. Motion carries four zero. The next one we have is the Planning Commission. And we have an alternate number two vacancy. And that is an at-large appointment also. I'd like to make a motion for David Bridal, the, a planner with the city of Kissimmee. Looks like it has a good resume for uh, planning commission. I'll make a second to that. Are there any other nominations? We have a motion from Councilmember Trace, second from the mayor, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Matheny. Aye. Councilmember Cooper? Aye. Deputy Mayor Trace? Aye. Mayor Blackwell? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. <clears throat> Mr. Manzaris? I think. Although this I is... think it's ironic that an engineer sitting on the council would appoint a planner to the commission. <laughs> <laughs> only, make, only to make Andre squirm. <laughs> uh, <God. laughs> couldn't, couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Sturgeon. Thank you, Mayor. City Manager. I have two items. First off, uh, you recall last council meeting, the council directed uh, me to draft a letter for the mayor to send to the chairman of the Board of County Commissions to have a joint meeting. I spoke to the county managers, and our assistants are working on dates right now. We'll get everybody's calendar together and hopefully have that meeting soon. Uh, the second thing I want to bring you update is the downtown phase two project. Uh, the South Florida Water Management District permits are in progress. Uh, OEI is addressing the comments from 100% FDOT plans with design exceptions will be provided. The tentative construction schedule is as follows. Final plans, May 2021, advertised to bid 
by the end of this month. Award date June 2021. Notice to proceed July 2021. Substantial completion January 2022. Final completion February 2022. And that's all weather dependent. So we'll be moving that forward. That's all I have. And can you email those dates out? Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilmember Trace. Um, I had a question from a resident about the skate park, and they had um, an issue with the fence, but is that happening still, the, like the new yes, skate park? Yes, that's correct. So what happened when we did the soil samples, we found some things in there that weren't conducive to solid soil. So we're actually no, working next with to the landfill, huh? Tetra Kate, Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Tetra Tech to how we're going to fill that, and they're working on that plan right now. Okay. So it is moving forward. It just we had to back up because of that soil samples. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Councilor Cooper. Mm, <clears throat> excuse me. Did you tell me about the shovel board? And I, I'll have to check on that, Mr. Cooper. That I was told that went out to bid, and, and I, I didn't follow up on that. It, and my staff tells me they did something. I'm hoping they did. So I'll, I'll let you know. It's sure taking a long time to get it done. Um, You and I talk, talked about a little bit um, on Orange Avenue, right there in back of uh, Tenth Street, where we bought the the old house and tore it down. Catcher said, "We tore that down." To the south of that, on Orange Avenue, if you stay on Orange Avenue and just go to the next vacant property. There's about six or seven acres there and it is for sale i think and i got a picture here so if you didn't get a picture of it thank you it, it's just a it would behoove i think the city council to go ahead and move forward if we couldn't find more property for Mount peace just looking out before it goes goodbye just a suggestion that we may we, we're, we're running out of uh, do you have a map of it Here, let me see if I can put it up on the overhead it's uh, black and white it's, it's very dark we might be able to Hopefully you can't. can't six, six or seven. seven. Six or seven. Okay. I think my voice is gone. Yeah. My voice is gone. <laughs> Kaboo. It's right there. Yes. Thank you. It is low. It's not not high and dry. I always thought that was a wetland. Yeah, it's almost. And that's there now. Like. Mm -mm. Do well, we have 100 years worth of cemetery left? Do we have? No, you don't have that. I can tell you that right yeah. now. You only have just the corner right there at 10th and uh, Orange Avenue. That's about a couple hundred square feet by 200 square feet. Yeah, I don't know the particulars of it, but I, I would support looking, looking into it. it. You know, Mount Peace is going to come to a screeching halt real quick. I hate to say that. Well, I think you have a consensus to look into that, Mr. Sturgeon. All right. Thank you, Council. Um, music is on, off, in, so, started. So we, um, it's been completed except for three polls. We've tested it. It works. We do have an issue with some of the speakers covered the photoelectric eye, so we're going to have to put a timing system on. And um, it's ready to go. And we've subscribed to a service that would provide the music, different genres, and <clears throat> so we'll just need to get with, we're going to get with um, some other cities and figure out how they, when they play it and things like that. That was my question. Maybe running to Kissimmee to find out how often they play theirs, what they play, you know, what, what hours you do or don't. They're just a suggestion. Um, I think I asked you something else, wasn't I? Yeah, I can't, can't trust you. <laughs> no. um, I 
No, if you can check on those two. Yes, sir. I have them written down. Be right. Thanks, sir. Councilman Bethany. <clears throat> um, I don't have anything. I just hope um, everyone got their tickets to the veterans dinner that's happening on Saturday. That's always a great event and Soldier City and it's they always do. A, I, I think it's one of the best events we have during the year. And um, this year they reached out and asked some local elected officials to serve the food. So it'll probably be a, a comedy show as well as dinner. <laughs> so the mayor and myself, along with other um, elected officials will be there serving um, dinner. So that's it for me. Thank you. I do not have anything new to add. Brings us to our information section and report section. Thursday, May the 20th, there will be a city council workshop at 3 p.m. here at City Hall. Thursday, May the 27th, there will be a city council meeting at 6.30 p.m. also here at City Hall Chambers. Monday, May the 31st, city offices will be closed in observance of the Memorial Day holiday. We have issued four different proclamations this week, a proclamation recognition of the National Public Works Week, a proclamation recognition of the National Safe Boating Week, a proclamation and recognition of the National EMS Week, and a proclamation and recognition of Building Safety Month. And I would like to just send out a big thank you to all of our EMS workers and, and our uh, rescue guys for all the incredible work that they do and have done, especially through this pandemic. I'd like to remind you we have reports available. Warrant list number 11. Judith Hernandez of the Human Resources Department was presented the Employee of the Month Award for the month of March 2021. Congratulations to Ms. Hernandez. The Recreation Advisory Committee minutes for March 2021 have been approved and are available for your review. With that, we have no other business. We will be adjourned. Thank you for participating in your government. Two minutes. So, you're definitely back to normal.